Welcome back, bread friends. It's me, your calm, low-key, not Ellen the Baker Chick, your friend in the kitchen, baking bread using a bread machine. And here I am, and the first thing I need to do is show you my fabulous apron. So it is reversible. I have it tied, but it has a different fabric on the other side, contrasting pockets. Look at this, pockets, these cute little buttons, the perfect neckline. I, I don't like those double ring kind of aprons. I like, this is more comfortable. My friend Janine sent this to me as a congratulations, you made 5,000 subscribers on YouTube gift. Janine and I have never met in person. I'm in California, she's in New York, but we have known each other through bread machine groups and talked on the phone and everything for, I think at least three years, maybe longer, I'm not sure. And she's wonderful and sweet and kooky and she's the best. And she's, she made this apron for me and I'm, just blown away. It is so adorable with all the types of bread, different types of bread and the other two different fabrics. I mean, I'm a lucky ducky here. So that's the first order of business. Thank you so much, Janine. I love this so much. All right, so the next part is how to use a Pullman pan. And people use a Pullman pan because they like to have all of the slices be exactly the same. I'm gonna show you, it has a cover and it slides completely off, or, and it slides on, okay? And how the bread comes out, if you can look inside the pan, is straight, four straight equal, or maybe not equal sides, but four straight sides, comes out in a rectangular tube, or whatever you want to call it. So here's the funny part of this video. I never wanted a Pullman pan. I, it's not that I minded spending the money because I will spend money on what I want. I am not particularly frugal as my videographer is nodding yes with the camera when he moves it that way, but I didn't really ever want to use this because I don't really love how it looks like it came out of a Play-Doh factory. <laughs> like a, but enough of you want to know how to use it. Enough of you have families, maybe you're making three or four sandwiches, maybe more for big families. And I guess it's easier for making sandwiches when all the bread is exactly the same size and shape. So that is why the main reason I believe why people use the Pullman pan. I asked around, people told me different things. We don't make a lot of sandwiches in our house. We have a piece of bread for toast in the morning or something, but, but I bought it for you. <laughs> I did this for you so I could make this video for you. And um, so that's what I'm doing today. So I'm going to remove the lid and I have sprayed in this pan with my nonstick canola oil spray. I mean, you can probably just brush it really well with oil or use Pam or anything else. I have told you in the past not to use Pam, but that's only with the Williams Sonoma Gold Touch. If you wanna use Pam, I'm sure it will be fine. Although I don't know, I don't wanna say use Pam, but I use this stuff from Costco, we buy it like in a triple pack or something and that's what I use in all my bread pans. So what I have over here is dough ready to go in because this is just a demo of how to use the Pullman pan, okay? So what I did was used my white bread recipe, my fluffy soft white bread recipe that I'll link you to below and the only difference is that I added three grams of cinnamon and I think it was 100 grams of 
currants. Currants look like raisins that are half the size. They're a little bit different, different grapes. They're Zante currants. And the only reason I chose to use the currants is because I haven't been using them for a while and I don't want my currants to go bad. You could of course use raisins and you don't have to make cinnamon raisin bread in the Pullman. I just already have a white bread, a plain white bread in my freezer made in the Pullman pan. I didn't need any more white bread. I didn't want any wheat bread right now. So this is what we're using. So I'm just kind of going to pat it out, roll it into a log and kind of compare the size. That's all I'm doing. And that looks, I think, pretty good. There we go. I'm just going to plop it in. So here is where you're going to make your judgment calls. I, when I tried this a few days ago and I made the white bread without the cinnamon and the currants, I just put the lid on, let it rise in the slightly warmed oven like I always do in my videos and we'll show you, but I always do that. I let it rise, I kept the lid on during the rise, I kept the lid on during the whole bake, it all got brown and it was a nice tender crumb inside. Some people let it rise open and then put the lid on for baking. Some people let it rise open and put the lid on for baking, but then the last 15 minutes take the lid off during the baking. All I did the first time with the white bread that I have in my freezer, all I did is let it rise, keep the lid on, let it um, bake, and when I went to make sure it was done, I just slid this, stuck my instant read thermometer. When it got to 200 degrees, I took it out, slid the lid off, waited, you know, 10 minutes or so, and then dumped it onto a rack to cool. And it turned out perfectly. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep the lid on for rising because I, I don't know why you would take the lid off because what if it rose and then I had to smash it down with the lid. And that's why I don't understand why you would want to let it rise without the lid. You can experiment, <laughs> but this is what I did before and this is what I'm going to do now. So we're going to take a little jaunt over to my oven and we're gonna talk about rising for just a moment. I'm gonna move this closer and hope I don't knock it over and make a big, big noise. So I'm, look how my oven rack is in the perfect place. If you have a proof setting on your oven, now if you've watched this part a million times, please fast forward. But if you have a proof on your oven, you just hit that proof and set it for 45 minutes, walk away, you're good. Proof should be at about 85 degrees. So what I do, because I don't have a proof, because my oven is a bit older, is I set it for the lowest possible temperature my oven will take, which is 170. And then, so I start my oven at 170 and I set a timer for one minute. That's it, one minute. You must set the timer. It is way too easy to, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom really quick. I'll remember to come back in a minute. Or, oh, the phone's ringing. I'll remember to come back in a minute. Or your child or your spouse or your partner or your dog comes over and you get distracted and then you've heated your oven for way too long. Even the smartest people in the world can forget to turn off the oven in one minute. Please, for the love of bread, set your timer, okay? We are not heating the oven all the way to 170. We are only turning it to the lowest temperature, which mine happens to be 170 for one minute and turning it back off. You are not going to run your oven all that time. Some people turn on their oven light for rising instead of heating it a little bit. That's using electricity the whole time. My way is one minute of electricity. 
So you can see that my one minute timer has gone off. I've turned off the timer and I've turned off the oven. The oven is not on. You are not using electricity or gas, whichever you have, for more than one little teeny minute. I'm gonna pop this in right here with the lid on. I wanna make sure I, I wanna make sure that since I always access the oven from this side, I'm gonna put it in like this, because then I can go like this and check it out. So I'm, I'll push it in a little more. All right, so I'm going to set a timer for 45 minutes. At the end of the 45 minutes, I will take that out of the oven, and it should have risen a lot, and I will show you what that looks like on the video. And then, and that is the time I will heat my oven to 350 to bake it. And we'll talk about that in the next scene. I'm a girl who likes to be prepared ahead of time. Prep, prep, prep. So I have my hot pad, my trivet laid out. I have the cooling rack. I have my oven mitts over here. There's my oven. And I have my instant read thermometer. Um, I will tell you something. This is a King Arthur Thermapen. Um, it's, a, it's a little, well, it's significantly more expensive than a, just a normal $10 Kaizen like I've shown you in the past. It is slightly faster, but I would say as far as accuracy, accuracy goes, it's about the same. Um, the Kaizen one, I think I put it over here, that I've been showing you a lot for all these years. Looks, whoops, <laughs> looks like this. I think it's 10 or $12. Honestly, if I had it to do over again, I would not have bothered to get the Thermapen from King Arthur. It's good, it's not, not that it's not good, but I don't know that it was worth the money. The other one was doing fine. I got sucked in. <laughs> anyway, be prepared like a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout. So the rise is almost complete. Well, it is complete actually. And you can see it's doubled in size. It's not all the way up to the top. Um, we'll see, maybe it'll, hopefully it'll puff up more, it'll baking, which means that this will make it have the flat top. But that doesn't mean that it won't be good if it doesn't go all the way to the top. It's just how to use this pan and have this shape. So now I'm going to take this out of here I'm gonna slide this close, and I'm just happy with how easy it is to do because I was worried about that. Um, and I'm going to put it on my counter and then set the oven to 350 and pop it in when it's heated. It's been a half an hour. It has not come to temperature yet. It's about 162. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do now because this is not really getting brown. Looks kind of yellowy in the picture, but it's not quite brown. I'm going to take the lid off and just let it brown and bake for about 10 or 15 more minutes. There's my other timer. Timers, timers everywhere. Okay, this is the second to the last part of the video. Um, obviously it got a little uneven. When I took the lid off, remember I showed you how this part over here wasn't brown? Well, when I took the lid off, this part was, but that part wasn't. I'm not sure why, but next time maybe I will turn it in my oven for the second half of baking or something like that. But it's not burned, it's just a little extra brown. Um, and it got to 200 degrees after I showed you in the last slide at when it was 162. It suddenly, when I took the lid off, um, I had it set for 11 more minutes, but I checked it at seven more minutes and it was nice and brown on top. That was a total of, I think, 30, seven minutes of baking until it got to 200 degrees. So I'm going to leave this in here just for maybe 20 minutes to let it cool a little bit. And then I'm going to put it onto the rack to cool for two or three hours. And then the last part of this video, I will show you what the inside crumb looks like. And I want to show you that I turned the apron the other way so you can see the other fabric. And I wanna thank Janine again for making this fabulous apron for me. This is such a treasure, such a treat. I have way too many aprons. 
but I have a new favorite. <laughs> and um, thank you so much, Janine. This is just the best thing ever. I really, really appreciate this. And thank you all for watching. We're not done yet. Um, but before I forget, under this video, there is a description. Like, so you see the video like this in a rectangle, right, where it plays? Under that, on the YouTube page, you will see the beginning of a description, and you probably will have to click on the word more. And in that description, I will have a direct link to the video for my fluffy soft white bread. And then I will also have the modifications and all the modifications were is that I added three grams of cinnamon and I think it was 80, no, 100 grams of currants. Yes, you could use raisins. When you use either raisins or currants, you put a tiny, tiny bit of flour and kind of coat them because they distribute better into the mix and you add them at the add beak. So again, I will show you the crumb a little bit later. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up below. Share it with your friends. And also, if you haven't, subscribe to my channel.